So what is Nakagami fading? Well, here's the formula for the probability density function, and it has two parameters, m, which is commonly called the shape parameter, um, and the, it is bigger than a half, and omega, which is bigger than zero, which is the spread parameter. Um, now, it's important to realize that in communication systems with multipath fading, uh, there is no true absolute fading statistic. The fading happens by waveforms bouncing off buildings and coming into the receivers. And all we are doing here is making a model of that. So there are other models, the Rayleigh model and the Ricean model, and uh, you can see the links in below this video for videos on those two other fading models. And the Nakagami is simply another model which has been found to be in practice to match up very well with measurements of signals in certain scenarios, particularly uh, in indoor scenarios. So let's look at what the curves look like for different values of these shape parameters. And then I'll, I'll try briefly to compare them to uh, the, other, um, the other parameters, uh, the other models. Okay, so one thing to notice actually, first of all, is if m equals one, and if sigma, the cap, sorry, if omega equals two sigma squared, then you have exactly the formula, this exactly becomes the formula for Rayleigh fading. So straight there, one of the examples, one of the cases from Nakagami, when you set these two parameters here, you can do it yourself and, and verify it for yourself, you actually get Rayleigh as a special case. So what does Rayleigh fading look like? Well, if I draw the probability here of uh, the density function, as we know, the Rayleigh for the amplitude distribution uh, looks like this function here. So this is for m equals 1. This is the m equals 1 case. So what about the other cases and what does Nakagami give you in terms of modeling different types of scenarios with different numbers of buildings, different tall buildings, small buildings, uh, all sorts of different environments for mobile communications and you want to have appropriate models for each of those environments. And you do that by taking measurements and then matching the measurements to the right parameters that you have for, for a particular model. So you, you take measurements, you you pick a model, whether it's Rayleigh or Ricean or Nakagami, and then you try to learn values of the parameters which match the measurements so that the PDF matches your the histogram of your measured channel values. So this is what the, the Nakagami looks like. I'm just sketching it here uh, if as you increase the M parameter. Uh, so the, uh, the, the uh, height gets higher and it shifts to the right and the width gets narrower. So what it says is uh, as you increase m for the Nakagami um, parameter here, uh, for the Nakagami distribution, uh, you're going to get, you're going to move away from the Rayleigh case to more of a case where, like Ricean, there's a direct line of sight. So this is saying here for m equals 3, it's saying there's more chance of getting a signal with an amplitude of this value here uh, than there is of getting a signal with a smaller amplitude. Um, but there's not much chance of getting very small. And so this is going to be modeled by scenario, this is going to model well scenarios where there's a, a direct line of sight or maybe a number of main dominating paths uh, plus other uh, paths, just as it was in the Ricean case. But the shape of these curves is different to the Ricean. So sometimes for some scenarios, maybe some buildings or some outdoor scenarios, the Nakagami is going to fit better to the real scenario than the Ricean. I'm just going to sketch the Ricean here for a comparison. This is what happens as M gets bigger for the Nakagami. Um, and uh, maybe, I mean, this is just my sketching. I haven't sketched the M equals 3 particularly well. You can, uh, you can look up and find better pictures for M equals 3, but this is the relative shapes of those. Uh, just my hand sketching here. Uh, and I'll just draw sort of a sketch uh, because it's hard often to find comparisons for the Ricean, but this was, if this is the Ricean case, uh, and as you increased the S parameter in Ricean, so both, both for Nakagami for M equals one, you have Rayleigh, and for S equals zero, you also have Rayleigh. So for Ricean with S equals zero, 
you also have, so this is S equals zero in the Ricean case, uh, you also have Rayleigh. So this one's Rayleigh and this one's Rayleigh. These curves are the same curves. So what happens if we increase the S parameter, which is the mean of the uh, line of sight parameter in Ricean? Well, you get a shape which is more spread out and with a lower amplitude. So this would be S equals four, for example. Uh, and so uh, in here, you're gonna, uh, just so that it matches up with the, uh, maybe this is S equals two. Okay, so this is what happens with the Ricean PDF. As you increase the parameter S, you go from the Rayleigh to these more spread out, but with a dominating path, which shows there's more chance of having a higher value. And with Nakagami, you also get a move to the right as you increase the M parameter, but it moves to the right and becomes narrower. And so in some cases, Ricean might fit the data for the measurements that you make in some environments with particular multipath characteristics, in some cases, Nakagami. And that's really the difference between these two, uh, these two scenarios, Nakagami and Ricean. They're simply different expressions for a probability density function, and they match well with measurements in different scenarios. So they're both useful, uh, and they both uh, come down, if you pick particular values of parameters, they both have Rayleigh fading as a special case. So don't forget, uh, if you like this video, please uh, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, it helps others to find the video, and subscribe to the channel for more videos, and check out the website in the link below for a full categorised list of all the videos on the channel.